Oh, verses 16 to 18, my dear brother. Uh, oh, you ladies read everything, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You all right over there, brother? All right, take your time. All right, so this is... Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 4. Um, give me 16 to 18, brother, please. Uh huh. Yet if any man suffer. Yet if any man suffer, this is 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. If any man suffer. As a Christian. As a Christian. So that means you will suffer. So if you suffer as a Christian, listen to what Peter is saying. Let him not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed because you suffer as a Christian. Praise the Lord. Amen. People going to talk about you. People going to put you down. Praise the Lord. Everyone's not going to love you like uh, Matthew 10, 22, 22, if I believe is correct. Jesus said, people, will, men, all men will hate you because of me. Yeah. He didn't say they're going to love you. You would think because, you, hold it. This is what I say when people talk about you. What I got to remind people was, what did they do to Jesus? Hmm. Huh? These same people that ridicule you for being a Christian and tell you you're not a Christian because everybody in your family don't love you. Everybody's not close to you. People stab you in your back and make you feel like you're the crazy one and, and you going crazy, right? Well, stop for a minute, dear brother, dear sister. Look what they did to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. They didn't, everybody didn't love Jesus. They hung him. They crucified him. They put crown of thorns on his head till he bled. They pierced him in the side until he bled. They nailed his hands until he bled. They nailed his feet until he bled. They talked about him like a dog. Everybody didn't love him. Same book we was in, John 6 and John 6, but the 66th verse, which is 66, says, and they walked, no, look in that scripture for me, John 6 and 66. And I think it says, and they walked no more with him. Hold it. He fed him. He gave him water to drink. Healed them. Gave sight to the blind. Walking to the lame. Don't forget. I'm with you, brother. I ain't forget. I'm just bringing this out with other scriptures. Matthew 10, 22. And John 6 and 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back. From that time, many of his disciples went back. 666 is the mark of those who might have known the Lord, but they turned their back on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on. Go ahead. They walked, in the war with him. they walked no more with him. They turned their back on the Lord. So you think if, now Jesus said they're going to do the same thing to you mm -hmm. if you are a follower, right? And even those that under pastor, if they hate the pastor, they may hate you. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Jump up and go find another pastor? You can. You can. But that's like jumping out of a relationship. Who's to say what's going to happen when you jump to the next one? Because if you're about real and truth, real and truth don't change. Is that right? What's going to be real is real and what's going to be truth is truth. Truth is always real, but real is always not always true. Because a lie is real, but it's not the truth. But it's real. Amen. Go ahead, brother. 16, first uh Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Said, not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Wow, so if you suffer as a Christian, make sure you're not suffering as a liar. Now hold it. It's the difference between you being a liar and they calling you a liar. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you if you if they're lying on you, glorify them. Now, how can you glorify when somebody calls you a thief and you didn't steal anything? Or they call you a liar and you're not a liar. They call you a homosexual and you're not a homosexual. You got to get close to God. You, 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 this is where it, it separates the natural from the spiritual. You have to, God has to become really real with you. Now it's no figment of no imagination. Is he real in your life or not? And you're going to have to call on him so that you can feel his power to embrace you in this time of trouble. Can I get with you? Go, go ahead, brother. 17, 1 Peter 4 and 17. The time is come. The time is come right now. Judgment must begin. Uh oh, judgment will begin where? Begin at the house of God. G judgment begins at the house of God. So we're going to claim God. Mm -hmm. Judgment starts with us. Mm -hmm. And whom God loves, he disciplines. Romans, I mean, Hebrews chapter 12. So don't get angry when God lets certain things happen because that's to perfect you. 
to bring you closer. See, some people throw up their hands. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. And they get mad because they figure they, they've been to these organized churches and they told them if you come to Jesus, everything is going to be all right. Mm -hmm. They didn't t lie to you totally, but it may not be all right right now. Mm -hmm. But if you hold on, it's going to be all right. Can I get a witness? Yeah. But right now, you might have to go through something. Yeah. In your home, you might be going with those oh, through man. with the temptation, right? Uh -huh. But you got to hold on. Can I get a witness? Right. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. At us. If judgment first begins with us, the children of God, mm -hmm. the people who are practicing God, right? Uh -huh. Go ahead. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? Hold it. What shall the end be for those that obey not the gospel? If we were just dying, it wouldn't matter. How many more minutes I got? Okay, good. So you see what I'm saying? If we were just dying, it wouldn't even be a question. Where are we going? It doesn't matter. We're dead, right? But this is allowing us to know we're going to live. So if judgment begins at the house of God, amen, and what's going to happen to the disobedient? Go ahead, brother. 18 says, uh, and if the righteous... If the righteous... Scarcely be saved. And we said, what, does, what did you say, mother, that the righteous meant? I mean, scarcely meant the last time? Yeah. Um, slim chance. Slim chance. Just making it. Just, just barely. Barely. Huh? Making it by a thread. Mm -hmm. So if the righteous scarcely make it in, huh? Mm -hmm. Where? Go ahead, brother. Where shall the godly and the sinner appear? Where shall the godly and the sinner appear? So if we were all just going to go to the grave, we would have appeared in the grave. And what would it matter? So this is giving significance to let us know that there's life after death. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm ready, so I'm getting ready to close. That's it. Was that the end of that, brother? This is, um, still more. Um, you can read a couple more. That was the end of the 18th, right? Yes. Sir. Right. But it does the. One more, 19. Uh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. If there's only one more, go ahead. Uh, it says, Wherefore, Wherefore let, them that suffer, let those that suffer. According to the will of God. Hold it. If you're suffering according to the will of God. This goes for man and woman. So this lets you know you just can't run just because you suffer. But question yourself, are you suffering for Christ? Are you doing what a man supposed to do for Christ and are you suffering for it? Now that's different from if you're doing something wrong as a man and then you're suffering because that's not for Christ. Are you doing what the woman of God is supposed to be doing and you're suffering as a woman of God? You all hear me, ladies? Amen. Amen. Then if you're suffering, it's telling you to hold on. Glorify. Be, give praise in your, in your suffering. And the only way you're going to do that, you that's what you got to Remember it said Jesus prayed? And there's another scripture I, I got to find that says, you haven't prayed until your blood, until your sweat changes to blood. That's praying. Ah, oh, shot time. Huh? Jesus, when he was out there, when he told them to watch as well as pray. Hold that scripture, but I want you to go with that. He, he, he prayed until the Bible said that the sweat was as drops of blood. So that means he was praying to, it's like his guts, the flesh was dying in him. It's like he was leaving to go back where it came from. He was reaching heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it says we haven't done that. But the question is, so when you say you're suffering as a man, when you say you're suffering as a woman, are you suffering for Christ, though? That's the question. Are you suffering for Christ? And if you're suffering for Christ, I'm not crazy. And I know some people, even in the pulpit now, they just tell you to run. That's not what the Bible tells you to do, though. Stand fast in the liberty when Christ has set you free. Now, it doesn't mean that maybe some people might have to separate a little bit from it if they're buying a crazy. Praise the Lord. But suffering is a part, and that's suffering. Violence is suffering, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to the worst. There's somebody pulling a gun, a knife, or, or hitting you over the head with a frying pan or a brick. That's suffering. Mm -hmm. But remember, I'm not saying but as, this is, as I'm insensitive. I'm just telling you suffering is part of it. So we have to pray for one another. I don't want you to suffer. Amen? I don't want you to suffer, but you're going to suffer some kind of way. But you can overcome the suffering to the point that you can battle the devil, tell the devil, get under my foot. Get behind me. In the name of Jesus, I'm not going to let you control our family. Control me. 
Hallelujah. And if you're a woman, you might can't talk to the man because he's not listening. But you got to go and pray in secret and say, God, touch this man. Hasha. Huh? Sometimes a man can't talk to a woman. And he's the head. She don't want to hear what you have to say. So you got to go, Lord, help me with this woman. Just like a woman has to say, help me with this man. Because sometimes we are not, the elevator is not opening. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's, it's, it's moving up and down, but the door not open. Praise the Lord. It's something wrong. There's a malfunction. Or sometimes the door, you can push the button, the door is not closing. Hallelujah. Amen. Or sometimes we get stuck on the floor. Amen. We get stuck. Go ahead, brother. God permit the keeping of their souls. I'm starting over for me, brother. It says, um, according to the will of God. According to the will of God. Commit. Commit. To the, keep, the keeping of their souls to him and will and well-doing. All right, you've got to commit to the God keeping of your soul. We're not just keeping ourselves. It's the word of God. Remember, he breathed into us. We became a living soul from the beginning, right? Uh -huh. So this is the reason. What are we all doing? Inhaling and exhaling. So God is still doing his job. Amen. Amen? The air is like God. So far as we know, Numa, air, spirit, the air is God, right? And God is in the air, huh? He's in the spirit because that gives us life. Because the moment a person stops breathing, what do they stop doing? Stop living. Is that right? So God is right here all the time. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep ourselves committed unto God because he's a faithful creator. If he's faithful, we have to be faithful to him. Why be unfaithful to a person that's faithful? Now, that goes back. So if he's faithful, that means we can be unfaithful to him. That goes back to what I was saying about spiritual adultery, fornication. Because we cheat on God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, is that finished, brother? Huh? Okay. All right. So that's it, right? All right. Everybody read everything we had, right? Yes. Okay. So, amen. So, we're closing on that. What we want to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Recognize that we are to follow orders. Try to stay within the orders mm -hmm. and ask God to help us to walk within his order. Mm -hmm. Bind the devil from who will always try to cause confusion and look forward to the kingdom of God that's coming. That's why he said, thy kingdom come what? Thy will, will be done. Huh? On where? Earth. On the earth. As it is in heaven. Can I get a witness? Amen. I might as well go ahead and close now. This is why we keep on going to service after service. Because we can't make it without, amen, motivating one another. Is that right? Amen. Whether you motivate here or motivate there, we need motivation. Yes. I think Hebrews 10 and 25 says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together with other saints. Because when you hear other people and you see unity, there's strength in unity. Is that right? See, the world is in demonic unity, but we want to be in godly unity. Yes. Praise the Lord. We're not, we're not better, but we're trying to be better. Can I get a witness? We're striving for the perfection of God. Can I get a witness? I don't listen to nobody tell me that nobody's perfect. Because I'm smart enough to know you don't know everybody. And you don't even understand the people that you do know. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. It's hard enough to understand me. And, and it's hard enough for you to understand you. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. But when we start understanding ourselves, uh -huh. we start understanding that we're not that different. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Everybody just about that's normal have five fingers, oh, ten fingers, right? Five on each hand and five and ten toes. Five on each unless you're giant, you have six. Unless there's something abnormal. Is that right? But no. But everybody has a different footprint. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. Everybody has a hand, just about not everyone, but you know what I'm saying. The norm. But they have a different hand print, fingerprint. Is that right? Yes. Amen. We all have basically have eyes. The norm, the norm, right? We have a nose, one nose, that makes us human, and one mouth. Can I get a witness? Sure. We have two ears, is that yeah. right? Some have a big head, a small head, a medium head, but well, we all have a head. Can I get a witness? Sure. We all normal. Talk about normal. They are abnormal, and they are those that are disenfranchised or disabled. We're not talking about them because we understand and we pray for them. But in the norm, there's two feet. Is that right? 
Amen. Two legs. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. We function. We talk. Is that right? Amen. So we're calling on God. Uh, to ask God to make us the best that we can be. Uh, yeah. And God, I'm not going to leave you out if you are disabled in any shape, form, or fashion. Uh -huh. Amen. Our prayers go out to you uh, in the yeah. mighty name of Jesus. Uh, yeah. That with what you have, uh, yeah. we may not be operating at 100%, uh, uh -huh. but in whatever percent uh, uh -huh. that God allows us to operate, uh, uh -huh. we want the best that God has. Can yeah. I get with this? Yeah. Uh, amen. Because we're going to a place one day. Uh -huh. Uh, Soon and very soon. The way the world looks like is going to be sooner than later. And I'm just praying that we're all saved and delivered. Can I get away this? Because we're going to a place that no matter how disabled you are, amen, the disabledness will be pushed away and you will be made able. Can I get a witness? Amen. If you don't have no legs, you're going to a place where God is going to replace your leg. Lord, have mercy. If you go to a place, if you make it to heaven, you yeah. might have not had no arms, no hands, uh -huh. but you're going to a place where he's going to reestablish your arms and hands. Uh -huh. Can I get a witness? Yeah. You yeah. might have had a bad mind, yeah. but if you come to Jesus, uh -huh. he'll give you a new mind, uh -huh. a new heart. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I'm going to that place uh -huh. uh, over there where John declared, yeah. the wicked uh -huh. will cease from troubling uh -huh. The weary soul will be at rest. I'm going over there with no more tears, no more problems. I'm looking for it. And hallelujah, but you can feel it right here. Let it get in your soul. Let it get in your mind. God is the very present help in the time of trouble. Can I get away this? He'll bring you through. Yes, he will. He'll bring you through. Yeah. He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll place your feet on solid ground. Can I get a witness? All we got to do is hold on to Jesus. He is the way. Hold on to Jesus. He is the truth. Hold on to Jesus. He is life. Life everlasting. He's the dog. Can I get a witness? I'm knocking. What about you? I'm knocking at the door saying, Lord, I'm asking to receive. I'm seeking to find. I'm knocking that you might answer. I need thee every morning. I need every afternoon. I need in the midnight hour. Hey, hey, Lord, you've been mighty good to me. I've been through trials. I've been through tribulation. But you've been mighty good. You woke me up early this morning. Not just today, but yesterday. Down through the years. You've been mighty good to him. Can I get on with this? He's been our doctor. He's been our lawyer. He's answered our prayers. He's been right there. Can I get a witness? I'm glad to know Jesus in the pardon of my sin. Lord have mercy. Can I get a witness? He's good to us. Is that all right? Everybody all right? He's good. And if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? God bless you. Thank all of you for coming out. Those of you who are via telecast in the air, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. Trust him. Amen. Don't worry about it because you go through. If you go through with him, he'll also pick you up. There's victory in Jesus. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Let everybody clap your hands and say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. All right.